1.5 million and below and above won't be entitled to discounts. You know, I mean, if you, uh, if you can afford a 2.5 million house, you need a discount. If you can't get afford a 1 million house, you need a discount. If you can afford a 500,000 house, do you need a discount? You know? That, that's that's, that's the energy. And in, 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 the, in the last 10, 20 years, shares allocation, uh, AP, etc., during the time uh, when Anwar was, uh, you know, the, the kind of team, team A, team B after Razali, uh, team A, team B, uh, you know, every day in the new, in the new, new street science, we had this uh, Mahate group publishing uh, who had gained from the shares allocation, etc. This is all the carry on because of that rivalry with the unknown. <clears throat> Cultural policy, in the 1980s, the Chinese W. Hawley was one of the, the, the leaders in that when I remember when Ryan Ra 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 Chi was trying to level Bukit okay, China. You know, today we discovered that Han Tua and Han Li Po and everybody else never existed. <laughs> <laughs> but Bukit uh, okay, China was is the hill where the Chinese who have been here for hundreds of years. Uh, Mr. Sim was in detention with me and was one of the leaders in this Chinese army hall. It's got, <coughs> it's got a, a, an ancestry that goes up to 800 years. 800 years. Some of these people are buried at Bukit China. And because of the national cultural policy, they were going to level Bukit China and use the soil for reclamation in the Malacca Straits. Katonan Malayu today is used, you know, even the apologists of Katwana Malayu, of all people, uh, Dr. Chandra Muzaffa, has now said that Katwana Malayu is not the Malay dominance. It is not defined as Malay dominance, it is defined as Malay sovereignty. And Malay sovereignty means the sovereignty of the Malay Sultanate. This is the most incredible uh, rehabilitation of the concept I've ever heard. <laughs> but of all people, you know, because for, for the last decade since Abdullah Ahmad uh, came up with his infamous speech in, in Singapore in 1986, and Kedas, my good friend Kedas, who passed away in the early 90s, published a whole book called the, 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 the Dola Rubric, you know, where he <clears throat> compiled all the criticisms of uh, Dola Ahmad's pieces on, on uh, Ketuan Malayu. Uh, <clears throat> privatization and Amna Pushra, we are too familiar with that. Education policy. Remember in 2004 when the, uh, the former high education minister Shafi'i Saleh, he had just lost, by the way, he had just lost the Amna elections. So the Amna General Assembly was playing a great hero. He said as long as he was the high education minister, he would not allow a single non Bumi Putra to enter UITM. Not a single non Bumi Putra to enter UITM. Is that discrimination? <laughs> is that discrimination? <laughs> not one. Do you know how big UITM is? We've got so many campuses from Malaysia, and the enrollment in any particular time in Malaysia is more than 100,000. And they will not allow a single non Bumi Putra to enter the institute which is a public sector institution, which is provided for by all Malaysian taxpayers, but he will not allow a single non Putra to enter UITM. Of course, there was great cheers in the Arnold General Assembly. And <clears throat> uh, scholarships, I think that Dyson has, has done that. Chinese and Tamil schools. After 54 years, the number of Chinese and Tamil schools is now minus 70 for Chinese schools and minus 200 for Tamil schools. Our population has doubled since 1957. But the schools have got a negative number, you know. And recently, the, 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 the enrollment in schools have, have gone up. Uh, recently, I just want to see my children's school near, near the new village near my... It doesn't have a name. It's called the Batu Sembilan Cheras Primary School. And they had a, <clears throat> the land, total land area in, the, in their schools is less than one acre. And in the time when they went to school in the 80s, they had 2,000 students in a less than one acre. And recently, you know, typical Chinese uh, educationists, they keep building up. 
And at that time, my children had one basketball court. Now there's no basketball court anymore. This the whole one acre is just full of five, eight, five-story building. I just wondered how they move from one building to another. That's just passageway. And that is that is that is what is happening in the Chinese temple schools. <clears throat> at the same time, there is there are more than sixty thousand non-Chinese in Chinese primary schools now. And one school can be as few as a hundred students. Like the Chinese primary school in, in Fraser's Hill. It's got two classrooms made of Indians. So a hundred if you have if one school is made of a hundred students, sixty thousand students divided by a hundred is how many how many students? Is how many schools? And that's how the number of schools we've got left in this country. Discrimination in the civil armed services. <clears throat> Recently, the, I think the Ministry of Defense says that the, the Chinese are unpatriotic because they don't want to join the army. I remember when I was in school, it was very glamorous for our, <clears throat> our classmates to join the army. You know? And my brother, my brother was uh, was an arm, was, a, was a doctor, and instead of serving in the public hospitals, he chose to serve in the army, an army captain. Some of my, the, 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 the top sprinters in my school, the Chinese, they, they, they wanted to join the, the, the army. And at the time of May 13, I always pointed out, the Federal Reserve Unit was mainly made up of Chinese bad hats. The police wanted them to deal with the gangsters. So the Federal Reserve Unit at the time was mainly Chinese. So it's not true that the Chinese do not want to be army uh, soldiers or policemen. And the proportion of the Chinese in the army may have in 1960 is 50%. Proportion of Chinese in the civil service in 1960 was 30%. There are no, there are no uh, Chinese vice chancellors today in any of the public sector universities. Is it because the Chinese don't like universities? You know? And the same goes. The more devious, the more uh, devious from a rate of institutional racism, I think is still the racist indoctrination that goes on in all the, the, the public institutions. Uh, we saw it in the Arnold General Assembly. In any sociologist in the public university, it's a good idea to go through all the previous, of the last 10, 20 years, General Assembly, and have a good uh, read of everything that was said in this General Assembly. Because I think people only took note just before the 2008 uh, elections, when one of the last general assemblies was televised live, to the great shock of everybody of what was said at the general assembly. But actually, the same those kinds of blatant racism was said in all so many other general assemblies before that. Uh, BTM. And me as an I as an detainee, I know about BTN because they tried to do the Pumurehan with this rehabilitation. The first, the first thing you go to, uh, you're sent by police coach to Gamuting detention camp, is to see the camp that says, not the detention camp, it says camp Gamuting Pumurehan. I remember that we all got there and said, who are they trying to rehabilitate? Uh, you know. And then you have school assemblies in, for, for detainees. Your school children have school assemblies once a week. But we, including uh, the leader of the opposition, including Kapal Singh, including uh, Mr. Sinwo Yi, who was 70 over years old, including me, etc., we were supposed to have three assemblies every week. And we were supposed to pledge loyalty to the government. Why do you have to pledge loyalty to the government? The leader of the opposition comes from a different government, from a different party from the government. Why does it pledge loyalty to the government? And because of that, <clears throat> you know, we, play the, uh, the, we read the newspapers at that time. They said, these guys are really anti-national because they refuse to sing the national anthem, because they refuse to take part in the assembly three times a week. You don't take part in the assembly three times a week, it shows you're anti-national because you don't want to sing the national anthem three times a week. How many times a week have you sung the national anthem? Any of you. Okay? I think my point is <clears throat> proven. Uh, 
Um, the point that was already been made by Hendra about the death in custody. Uh, I come from Swaram and we've been monitoring death in custody and uh, death by police shootings. And there is a frighteningly high proportion of Indians who are killed, dead, who are killed in, in police custody and who are killed in police shootings. And this is where uh, the statistics are there for you to see. Okay? And, uh, and there's really a very serious. It, 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 I have not been part of the, the, the academic fraternity in this country, because I was a sociologist in this country. I'd be very interested to, to do sociological studies of this phenomenon. How is it that the Indians are supposed to be a minority in this country, less than 10%? How many percent? Less than 10%. They outnumber everybody else in terms of uh, deaths in custody. You know? So that racism in this country has got. Uh, you know, in sociology, we, we have all kinds of concepts and, 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 and nice terms to describe all these, uh, this phenomenon. But it is certainly a, a sociological interest to find the difference in the kind of racism. And of course, it has come about only because through the years, the Indians in this country have become the marginalized community. Uh, the estates have been uh, progressively destroyed, and the leadership in the Indian community has been lacking until he draft came along. Uh, and that is accounted for, that racism by the police. And that racism, that, that, how it works, you have to work behind the scenes. Sociologists have got to go behind the scenes to see how they think. How do the police think? You know, how do the, the, uh, the people in authority think? Uh, to allow that to happen. There's a good in sociological study. Uh, and of course, the most alarming of all, is the fascism of the far right? That is the that is the uh, the limit. There is a limit of racism, okay? Because fascism, as we saw with the Nazis and the fascists of Italy and the fascists of, of Japan during the Second World War, that's the that's the ultimate. We've seen the far right in, in many of the of the of the European countries as well, and uh, in the United States, like the Ku Klux Klan. That is the far right uh, fascism, and the most. The most serious case, of course, uh, since the independence was 69 May 13, which I've written about in the book. And uh, I've said also in the book that we need a Truth and Reconciliation uh, Commission to really uh, wash away the, the kind, of, uh, kind of collective conscience of that period. The 1987 Amnor rally in Kampung Baru, the Jalan Rajamunda Stadium, where the present Prime Minister was on stage. Uh, uh, being a big hero as well, and they're calling for Chinese blood. That is a very serious. That's a very serious. Uh, you know, if, if, you, if there if there was uh, an equality and human rights commission, and the police were impartial, most of them should be locked up. Would have been locked up. Okay. Uh, the 1999 uh, Amnon demo against Su Chiu here, threatening the walk to burn down the Chinese Assembly Hall. The Su Chiu election demands that the Barisan National, including Mahate, had agreed to before the 99 general elections. But after that, Amnon Yu comes to have a rally, he asks them to, to withdraw the Su Chiu demands. And this is the, the idiotic uh, irony of the whole thing. Uh, and then the Malay Action Front, you know, I think, uh, as we said, they have been, that, that, that fascism has been outsourced to, uh, to Parakasa and Pakida. And the, uh, the most serious in recent years has been the 2001 Kapu Madan murders. I call them murders because they were 